Yo, what is up guys, Grim here, and in today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to go from epilogue all the way to Awakening 8 in the fastest time possible. Let's get into it. So you just rocked up in the epilogue after killing Kitava, you've got a few maps from the campaign, and you're ready to get stuck into the Atlas. First thing you want to do is complete the Kirat questline, and he'll give you a bonus map to boot and unlock the Atlas for you to look at. So first thing is, you're going to chuck that Kirak map you just got into the Atlas, and you're going to open that map up in the device. In that map, you want to make sure that you always clear as many monsters as you can in your maps, and also slay the map boss, and try and complete bonus objectives wherever possible. You can see the bonus objective by hovering over the map. This one says, um, kill boss of magic or higher version of this map. Very important. In addition to that, you always Always, from this point forward, after completing the Kirak map, want to ALK all of your maps. If you cannot do so, try and ALK, acquire ALKs from other sources. If you can't get ALKs, then go for transmutation orbs, worst case scenario. But in order for this strategy to work, you're going to have to get alchemy orbs at some point. In addition to that, you can also Vile and Chisel your maps if you're having trouble sustaining. This will greatly increase the amount of maps that you have available to you, but you should also try and focus on slaying all the monsters in it as well. So the first objective for all players should be to complete a Conqueror encounter in all four corners of the Atlas. That is going to allow us then to unlock the real core potential of the Atlas. So the first thing we need to do is get maps in these regions in order to spawn influence in them. This is a fairly easy task and your first border call is going to be trying to increase your map tier as fast as possible. In order to do this always run your highest tier map possible and it will have a chance of dropping a higher tier from that. As long as you're killing the map boss and all the monsters, this will naturally happen, but in order to speed up this process, you can actually run maps adjacent to corners, which are connected by lines. For example, if you run Val Pyramid, it will have a higher chance to drop a lookout map uh, as just a natural mechanic of the Atlas, which can turbocharge your progression. Very good there. All right, moving forward, that is going to be your goal. You get some maps in one of the corners. Next thing you need to do is make sure that you run them until influence spawns. When influence spawns, it'll look like a big colored, like kind of colored in block. And you want to continue to run maps until you spawn a Conqueror Citadel, in which you'll talk to Kirat and then Zana and be able to slay the Conqueror. Once slaying the Conqueror, you're going to get your first Watchstone. You should socket that into Valdo's Rest. And at this point, you want to then go and talk to Zana and see what maps she has on offer to sell. If she has any maps at all, which are worth chance orbs or even an alchemy orb, you should buy all of them, as maps are very valuable early on, especially maps that you haven't completed yet. At this point, you want to start looking at completing some maps that you haven't done. If you're running out of maps or you're having trouble to get higher tiers or sustain, higher Atlas bonus will actually give you a higher chance at getting higher maps and also more maps, which is very, very useful. So you want to try and get as many completion bonuses as possible. And if you have a map that you haven't done yet, it's very, very likely that you should put that in and run it and make sure you complete the bonus objective. Very good there. So you got your first watchstone in here. Now your objective is to complete the other three corners and get started on the main Atlas progression. So you're going to go up and you're going to use the same kind of strategy you've got here, like try and run Academy to try and get uh, Waste Pool, for example. And you're going to try and get the highest team maps you've got and really get into those corners. Once you have maps in one of the other corners and you spawn another Conqueror and then slay them, you'll have your second watchstone. Do that again for another corner and you'll get your third watchstone. After getting your third watchstone, you want to socket an additional two watchstones in the Lex Proxima area, and you'll notice that as you've been doing these corners, you've started to accumulate some Valdo's Rest maps. After slaying the third Conqueror, you're going to go to the last corner, get maps down there, and then of course slay that as well, and you'll have completed your fourth Conqueror. At this point, you should have a sizable amount of Valdo's Rest maps. If you don't, just complete the highest tier maps you have possible. Try and use Alchemy Orbs. If you have some chisels, throw them on too. And, you know, maybe even throw a Vile Orb on too on as well if you need. If, you, if that fails, then also try and increase your Atlas bonus. That will also help you. At this point, you want to run maps in Valdo's Rest until you spawn an additional Conqueror in Valdo's Rest. Complete that, and then you'll have your fifth Watchstone. Do this an additional three times until you've killed all the Conquerors again in Valdo's Rest, and at that point, you've completed the Valdo's Rest area, and you will have started to notice that you've started to accumulate a sizable amount of Lex Proxima maps at that point too. After completing Valdo's Rest, socket in three Watchstones into Turn's End. After socketing those three watchstones, you're going to start to do your Lex Proxima maps. Again, if you don't have them, do your highest tier maps possible with as much investment as possible. So keep running Lex Proxima maps until you complete another Conqueror, and then keep doing that until you have completed all four Conquerors again in the Lex Proxima area. At that point, you want to socket four watchstones in Glenwich Cairns. 
Now, you will have accumulated again a nice little bit of a map pool, I imagine, for turn's end. At this point, the maps have become red. And for some of the red maps, in order to complete the bonus objectives, you'll need to use a Valorb guaranteed on those maps in order to get the additional Awakener or Atlas bonus. Uh, so that's definitely a good tip there. So again, rinse and repeat, you're going to do four Conquerors in turn's end. The little bit of a twist here, though, is that as you're completing turns end and getting watchstones, you're going to continue to socket them in around the atlas, making sure they're evenly spread. So you'll get all one watchstone in all the areas, then two watchstones in all the areas, and then three watchstones in all the areas as you continue to complete conquerors. So after you complete all four conquerors in turns end, spreading the watchstones evenly, then you're going to move on to Glenditch Cans and do the same thing. So you're going to complete four conquerors in Glenditch Cans, and then you're going to fight Cyrus. So this is going to be your first Cyrus encounter. You may not complete it. You may complete it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't impact your progression at all. But now you're firmly in the end game. You have access to T16 maps, Guardian maps, Elder maps, the works. At this point, you can go ahead and go farm Shaper if you want. If that's your goal, you can do invitations or you can start going into Maven content. This is kind of like the soft point where you can kind of choose to do whatever you want in Path of Exile. But if you want to pursue Awakener 8 and greater Awakening um, bonuses, then you can continue on with this video. All right, let's move on. So after you complete the um, the kind of Awakener uh, or not, then you want to take out one Watchstone from Glenage Cans. And from this point forward, you don't want to have four Watchstones socketed while you're trying to progress the Atlas, except in the area that you're trying to spawn Conquerors in. That's very important. So of course, you've been spreading your Watchstones around the Atlas and you should have one or two in every zone by this point. Uh, and then the, the, the area that you're targeting, um, you want to have four Watchstones in that area. So we're going to try and do Nivistir next and we're going to try and get the remaining three Watchstones for Nivistir. And we're going to continue to run maps in that area until we get the remaining three Conquerors. And then as we kind of get close to completing the three Conquerors, we're going to move those Watchstones out into Haywick Hamlet or one of the other corners that we haven't completed yet. And then we're going to continue that until we have completed all of the corners for the Atlas and uh, as a result, 32 watchstones for everything. Some quick notes here. Obviously, that is the end of the guide, um, but you can always buy tons of maps off of Zana. This will be very, very good for completing Atlas completion quickly. In addition to that, Zana, the shop will reset every time you do a Zana mission, which is very, very powerful indeed. If you have Zana missions available and you've run out of maps or different maps to complete Atlas bonus objectives, then just do a Zana mission and her shop will reset and you can buy maps that way. If you're still having trouble getting maps that you haven't got yet, you can also do what's called the three to one recipe. Um, so you can get three ma maps and you can sell them to the vendor and they will give you a different map, which is pretty good. Actually, that, that, that's an old recipe there. So you can get three maps and you can sell it to a vendor and it'll give you a different map, uh, which is also pretty handy. Another cool tip you have here, guys, is using Orbs of Horizon. Uh, if you've dropped any of them, let's just try and find some in my currency tab here. Um, and those will also be able to actually re-roll a map, which is pretty awesome as well. So you can kind of get a different map um, to try and get more Atlas bonus, uh, move into the corners in the early game, or, you know, try and just overall get a different map. Uh, so that's pretty good there. Um, failing that though, you can also leverage Vile Orbs to upgrade tiers of maps. That is also an outcome. You can also go down that route. Uh, failing that though, you can also buy maps off other players if you specifically need a few or you need a map pool in a new area because you want to get started in it. Um, but you know, that's definitely something that you, is the last resort. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this guide. If you have any questions or anything like that, definitely post down below. A quick note though is if you are unable to socket watch turns in your Atlas, and you do not have a watchstone um, kind of a tower here, all you need to do is continue to complete new maps in that Atlas area and you will eventually encounter Zana and that watchstone tower um, for your convenience to socket those watchstones in there. That should just about cover it, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video and are looking forward to the next one. Uh, with all that said, see you guys in the next one. Cheers.